This is a walkthrough of an LED driver board repair that I did for my Nova 3D Elfin resin printer. This is what the board looks like. Uh, the connector on the right comes from the motherboard and has uh, three 12 volt lines, uh, three plus, three minus pins. And then on the top is a 24 volt pin that we believe is um, a signal pin to let the motherboard know uh, what's going on with the LED light and this board. The connector on the left goes to the LED lamp itself. Uh, that carries two lines of, uh, I've measured it at about 35 volts. Um, so that's the constant current output that drives the LED. So I started a print one day and the printer started alarming audibly. Um, so I troubleshot it a bit and saw that the light wasn't working. Then I started swapping in relevant parts from a second working printer uh, to narrow the problem down to uh, being inside of the LED driver board. I ran the problem by a couple guys on the team who know their EE, and uh, they both agreed that this MOSFET here in the center of the board was the most likely culprit. So I took this MOSFET off both of the boards and tested their um, ability to switch current with my uh, multi-tester by checking that the source and drain aren't connected until you charge the gate, which I just did there, and they both tested good. So back to the drawing board. Earlier when I was probing around on the board, I noticed that pin A to this little IC was connected to the gate of the MOSFET, so we figured it must be the MOSFET driver and therefore the next likely suspect. So I decided I was going to swap the two ICs to see if I could get the bad board working with the chip from the good board. So here I am um, removing one of the two ICs with some SMD rework um, material. This is not really solder. It uh, mixes with the solder on the pads and lowers the melting temperature of the whole uh, mixture and uh, lets you get the chip off, hopefully without burning it. This is the package that I picked up off Amazon. It comes with its own flux and plenty of the material you uh, actually want to use as little as possible because you're going to have to clean it all off before you can replace the part. But um, as you can see, it, it works really well. It, it uh, came right off with uh, minimal heat applied to the, to the part. To clean the pads off, I flooded the area with flux and then used some uh, solder braid to sop up the excess um, rework material. Uh, it was a lot more frustrating to get it off the, the part if you're uh, reusing the IC. Um, again, make sure you, you use the minimum amount of that stuff that you can. Uh, and then I just clean the pads off with some, some isopropyl, get them ready to uh, accept the, the part off the good board. There's more than one way to do that, particularly with these SOP packages. You could you could do it with an iron and a fine tip. I chose to do it with uh, hot air and paste just to practice more than any other reason, which is you're about to see I badly need. I had some trouble getting the paste to stick to the pads. Uh, don't remember that being a problem last time I used it, so maybe it's getting a bit old. Um, so I ended up just kind of smearing it around and hoping that the surface tension would would take care of it, which it mostly did. Um, I ended up going back later and uh, touching up some of the legs with uh, with my iron. This is a good time to mention that, you know, if you're intimidated by things like this, uh, don't be. Um, I mean, it's important to have the right tools, but these days the tools are, are very affordable. Uh, a decent, electronically controlled, very usable soldering iron is, you know, maybe 40 bucks. Um, I think I have maybe less than a hundred dollars invested in in between the hot air and the in the uh, the soldering iron. So these are very accessible tools, and with a little bit of practice, um, you know, you can you can do projects like this. So the punchline is that this chip did turn out to be the problem when I swapped the one off the good board onto the bad board. It rescued the bad board, and I'm able to source these from uh, eBay for about a dollar a piece. The chip is uh, QX Micro 5305, as you can see the marking there. And so I'll be able to um, to repair the now uh, unpopulated board and get both my printers back up and running. That's the video. Hope you learned something. 
This is Jared, a.k.a. Maker Matrix, on behalf of Photonsters. If you've got questions, ask here or find us on Facebook.